High School Basketball on Bear Country 95.3. Tonight's game, the All-Star Games from Smith Academy. Good evening, everyone. Live from Sherry Webb Gymnasium at Smith Academy in Hatfield. Welcome to the 2018 All-Star Games for the Hampshire Franklin IAA BO Board 28. Jeff Terrell, Bobby C. Courtside, Dave Reno, our studio producer. A night of fun, a night of basketball, a night of raising money for student athletes, furthering their education beyond high school. And Bobby, a chance one more time for the seniors to lace them up and play some b-ball. Well, this will be a showcase, probably the way you would see if you were going to go to an NBA All-Star game, where it'll be a lot of offense, a little bit of defense, maybe a little showboating here and there. That's all part of the fun. But I think the most important part of this event is that the officials, the ones that end up refing these games all year long, are putting together a scholarship fundraising opportunity to be able to showcase these seniors, and I think that is awesome. Yep, they've done this every year going back to 1982, so for over 30 years, well over 30 years, actually going on 40 years, the officials have been doing this. That's their way of giving back. You know, the officials, when you go to a game, the officials, they're not always the friends or the fans and even some of the players and the coaches. It's kind of a, a weird dynamic, a weird relationship, but at their core, they love basketball and they love these kids and this is their chance to get back now. Well, you know, it's funny because I think the reason why you and I are here is the same reason. We do love the kids and we do love the game of basketball and it's going to be fun to be able to see these ladies go first here with this great all-star game here tonight. One thing I wanted to say, Jeff, that I thought was great is the opportunity for me to be here tonight, but unfortunately, uh, Chris Collins was the one who was supposed to be set in and I just want to say that, Chris, we hope you get well, buddy. It's a big day for you tomorrow. we got two big games that we're doing and we want you to get well, all right? I just want to make sure I let people know that because this is my first time I've ever been to an all-star game in all the years I've been helping you guys out with basketball. It is so. a lot of fun. A lot of fun for sure. We're going to take a time out here on our pregame show. We'll be back with more pregame live from Hatfield on Bear Country 95.3. Financial support for FCAT's coverage of local high school sports provided by Leader Home Centers, your hometown home center with five locations to serve you in Amherst, South Deerfield, Barry, Greenfield, and Brattleboro, Vermont, or online at leaderhome.com. Visit them for all your building material needs. Raymond Financial Services, LLC. Take charge of your financial future. Insurance, investments, and benefits for individuals and employers. Attorney Daniel Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan's a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield office at 773-8706 for all your legal needs. Back here at Sherry Webb Gymnasium at Hatfield, Smith Academy. We get ready for the All-Star Games. The girls will be tipping off in about 10 minutes. Bobby, one of the things about these uh, All-Star Games, both boys and girls, sometimes it's a little slow going, and it's for two reasons. Number one, it's an All-Star Game, so you're bringing kids together that don't play on the same team ordinarily. Maybe they played some AAU ball together, but for the most part, it, it's, it's tough. The other thing is, for the majority of these uh, kids, their school season ended a couple of weeks ago. Now, there are some players here who have been part of the tournament. Uh, and, of course, we'll mention that there's some kids who are on the All-Star team that won't be here because they're playing in the state finals in Springfield tomorrow. But for that reason, sometimes it's a little bit slow to get cranked up. Well, you know, it's also a little bit different, too, because some of these schools, a lot of these girls don't even see each other during the season as well. I mean, the Hampshire girls probably don't know much about Franklin County and vice versa. Uh, some of these teams that, you know, from Amherst and some of the girls that are from Northampton, you know, they're part of a team with girls that they don't really know from Franklin County, which I think is pretty cool yes. that they match it up that way. So then they get a chance to sort of play with each other and maybe get a chance to be able to maybe build a friendship who knows and the thing that I've also noticed is that uh, the job for each of these coaches and on the girls side you've got uh, Fran LaFond of Smith Academy for the home team the East team and his uh, assistant is Dan Orzelak out of Ware and on the other side you got Matt Zanuri and Gene Rich coaching the uh, oh, sorry uh, uh, for the uh, girls game you got Perry Messer along with Sean Knightley from Franklin County Tech they're coaching the West team which will be the visiting team in the purple jerseys the idea is try you know they'll play everybody in, in about four or five minute spurts maybe two and a half minutes if it's a really fast paced game but they try to find the combination that gets it going and usually what happens is you'll see a big run by one team because they've got that combo going and then they take a seat of the bench and then the other team usually goes on a run. So it's kind of a strange night, but it's a fun night. You know, the most important part of this night is that we get a chance to showcase the seniors, 
be able to give them a big thank you for the hard efforts that they put in during their career. And it's really a nice opportunity for the refs to be able to say thank you to them as well with this great fundraiser. And maybe, uh, you know, a few of these will walk away with a very nice scholarship courtesy of tonight's game. All right, we'll take our final pregame timeout. When we come back, introduction of all the players and the opening tip-off, the girls game is next on Bear Country 95.3. All right, we'll send it to the floor. Mike Churchill, public address announcer here at Smith Academy. Featuring the All-Stars from the East and West representing the 20 public schools in Hampshire and Franklin County. The proceeds from tonight's event will go to fund the William F. Casey Scholarships. These scholarships have been given by Board 28 since 1982, and over $87,000 has been donated thanks to the efforts of our officials and our fans. Now for tonight's participants, beginning with the visitors from the West, from East Hampton High School, Julie Gorza. From Franklin County Tech, Amber Merritt. From Gateway Regional, Megan Wright. From Greenfield High School, Lizzie Howland. From Mohawk Trail Regional, Emma Pawlowski. From Mohawk Trail Regional, Emma Ray Reed. From Mohawk Trail Regional, Ashley Walker. From Northampton High, Claire Babbitt Bryan. From Northampton High, Bailey Maurer. From Northampton High School, Emma Tanner. From Pioneer Valley Regional, Elizabeth Lambert. Also selected but unable to participate for the West, from Frontier Regional, Lexa Boyden and Ella Dean. From Hampshire Regional, Caitlin Pekunga and from Smith Vocational, Natasha Dane. The coaches for the West, Perry Messer from Northampton High, and Sean Knightley from Franklin County Tech. And now the designated home team, the East, from Athol High School, Amber Mahoney. From Athol High School, Destiny Ridley. From Belchertown High School, Samantha Burks. From Granby Regional, Mallory Borgard. From Hopkins Academy, Leah Picard. From Mar Regional, Hannah Paul. And Kiana Riley. From the home school, Smith Academy Falcons, Hannah Rickert and Mary Whalen. From South Hadley High School, Abby Edge. From South Hadley High School, Michaela Edge. From Turner Falls High School, Madison Chinsinski. From Turner's Falls High School, Chloe Ellis. From Ware High School, Shannon Demers. And from Ware High School, Jordan Halgus. The coaches for the East, from the Homeschool Smith Academy, Fran LaFon. And from Ware, Dan Orzelak. Your officials for this evening's game are Mr. Mark Wickles, Mr. Fred Hopper, and Mr. Mark Ferraro. At this time, we'd like to ask all of us to please rise for the national anthems performed
today by Mr. Kevin Hollister. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets that glared the bones bursting air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled There you go, introduction of the teams here. And you know, they'll send out a starting five, but it's not really a situation where um, you know there's a designated starting five. Everybody's going to play, they play in short bursts. We will have media timeouts, radio, bear country timeouts. We have 20 minute halves, two 20 minute halves, and they'll have the timeouts at 16, 12, 8, and 4 minutes. So anybody that watches basketball on TV, you know that they have those television timeouts. We have radio timeouts here. And uh, oh, Maddie Chimzinski from Turner's Falls is going to be out there as uh, part of the first starting unit for the home team, which is the East All-Stars. And she's out there with one of the Edge girls from South Hadley, Demers, also out there. And, uh, oh, from the home school, Smith Academy. Mary Whalen is out there as well. We'll see Hannah Rickert. Demers is uh, that is Shannon Demers. So the home team again is the East All Stars in the white. Visitors from the West in the purple. Mark Wickles throws it up, and it's going to go to the West All Stars. They got it to Emma Poplowski of uh, Mohawk down low, knocked out of bounds, and it'll stay. And uh, Ashley Walker looking for her teammate. Little hook shot off the glass, no good. Rebound is taken down by Halgus. It's Jordan Halgus of Ware. Runs it up quickly. Wow, she's got some good foot speed. Run the lane all the way through, off the glass and in. Wow, really nice job right there. That's a coast to coast for Halgus. 2 0 in favor of the East All Stars. Little jumper from the left side. Poplowski, Emma Poplowski of. The Mohawk Trail Regional Warriors. Way to go, Emma. We are tied at two. And Maddie Chimzinski from Turner's Falls High. I can't believe I'm watching her for the last time now. Deep three ball left side by Chimzinski. No good. The ball is lost on the baseline, out of bounds, unable to corral it down there. It was number two, Abby Edge of South Hadley. It'll go back to the West All Stars. Again, we play 20 minute halves. And we do have the 30. Second shot clock. It does get officiated as a normal game. A foul is a foul. Usually we don't see too many fouls, however. Usually teams don't end up in the bonus. But these girls are ding up right now. Mary Whalen comes over on the, on the weak side to pick her up. Gets knocked out of bounds. It'll go back to the east. Well, that was good defense right there by Whalen. Doing a nice job. Really cut off that lane so she wasn't able to get down inside. We have a couple of uh, big events happening here tonight as well. The Sportsmanship Award and the Tom Cove Memorial Award. Mary Whalen from Smith Academy. Back iron, no good. Tipped around. Poplowski of Mohawk clears the board over to Walker. On the right elbow. A course, I should say. Now it's Lizzie Howland from Greenfield. Three ball right side fired up, no good. Maddie Chimzinski the rebound. Into the front court left. Thousand point score for Turner's Falls. Edge has it on the right. Coming all the way through the leaner. Front rim, no. Rebound pulled down by Lizzie Howland of Greenfield. And the West back on the attack. We have a two-all tie here. Two minutes in. Corza throws it left side. Could not quite hook up with Ashley Walker. And we have our first line change. It's going to be the West. We'll come out with five new girls. We'll, we'll place them as we go along here. Halgus will bring it up 
for the East All-Stars. Maddie Chimzinski on the right side. Back to Halgis, top of the key. Throws it on the left. Coming through, a little hook pass through the hands of Mary Raylan out of bounds. It'll go back to the West All-Stars. Well, that was a good look right there by Edge, but Whalen wasn't paying attention. Right underneath the basket, too. That could have been an easy two. Tanner from Northampton, right of the lane, swoops through. Reach and foul is going to be called against the East All-Stars. <laughs> yeah, these guys are having fun themselves. I love it. Having fun already. Now, Tanner already has the play of the game so far. During pregame, they were shooting around, and a ball came over and hit the camera for Frontier Community Access TV. They're here. And she reset it, got us both back in frame again. Yes. So she already made a great play before the opening tip-off. Makes the first free throw. That gives the West a 3-2 lead. Makes the second as well. She plays for Perry Messer at Northampton High, former boys coach at Pioneer. 4-2 in favor of the West. East with Maddie Chimzinski between the circles. Passes on the left side. Helgus of where pull up pop from the left side off the window, no good. Rebound is pulled down by the West. Attacking the basket on our right. Tanner has it in the right corner. Squares up for three, got it. Oh man, she is feeling it early. Nice job right there by Tanner, Emma. See, that's what I was telling you about, Bobby. There's usually a, uh, there's usually a unit, and right now for the West, it's this unit that it just goes out and dominates. Jumper from the top of the key. They went for the bank shot, no good. Comes down to Maddie Chimzinski. She'll take it on to the left. Her pass though is batted down. It's a two on two break. They try to feed the lane. Maurer's pass goes out of bounds. It's off of the east. It'll stay with the west. 17-1 the play here in the half. 7-2 in favor of the west. They throw it out deep. Now it's Maurer from just inside the arc. 18 foot J, that is good. Maurer knocks it Bailey down. Maurer. Bailey Maurer, another Northampton Blue Devil. 9-2 in favor of the West. And I'll say this, they are playing some okay defense, believe it or not. Ooh, not that time. Nice, <laughs> lefty lay and taking it right through. She had no problem going there. Jordan Algus was just like, hey, thank you. Another three, Maurer in the right corner. She knocks that one down a two. Just, just let Northampton play. Ooh, <laughs> That's how you gotta go. Feel it. Well, they went deep in the tournament. Western Mass champions. They uh, bowed out semifinal round. Edge hands it to Chimzinski. We're gonna have our first time out here coming up. August in the left corner. Now it's Mary Whalen. She's gonna take a jumper. A little bit short on that one. Rebound taken down by the West. After this bucket, we'll have our first time out. Tanner. Gets it over the left side. Nice ball movement, and we have a traveling call. And here's our first timeout. All right, we will take a timeout. 16.02 to play here in the first half. It is 12-4 in favor of the West All-Stars on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. All right, play back on now, and it's the West All-Stars driving through. The East All-Stars getting rejected down low. Nice D there. The East will keep it. And uh, we got to give credit where credit's due. That was a great block right there by Lizzie Howland from Greenfield. Amber Mahoney of Athol, that's who had that. And she has it on the right side. They dump it down low on the right block. They'll circle it around. Plenty of time, 15 on the shot clock. They dump it down low, backing in. They go back top of the key. That's Mallory Beauregard hits Mallory that jumper. Yeah, nice She's shot right there by Mallory. That was all net, too. She's from Granby. They saw their season end in a home loss to Greenfield. No, Western Mass quarterfinal round. Nice save by Emma Ree, but it got tipped to Mahoney. Here comes Amber Mahoney again from the Athol Red Raiders. Gets it on the right side. That jumper is a little bit short. Battle for the rebound. That's going to go out of bounds. We're going the other way. It'll be West Ball. They lead 12 to 6 after getting that great burst from Northampton High Girls. Yeah, that was a really nice job right there by Tanner and also by Maurer. They were great. I'm sure Perry Messer from Northampton, he'll have his girls out there at the end. Three-pointer right side, no good for Lizzie Howland. She just smiles. It missed by a lot. But well, you know why she smiled? Because uh, Coach Hickey wasn't going to let her shoot from out that far anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this is the night for you to be able to do that, this Lizzie. Is, this is the night where you can do uh, Bobby, where do you see the boys game? Where do, you, where do you see some of the stuff that uh, they allow to happen? It's, it's a lot of fun. Mallory Beauregard to Granby. Shuffle pass on the right side, all the way through, swooping through, unable to hit though, was uh, number three, that's uh, Michaela Edge out of South Hadley. Here comes the West, back the other way. Walker throws on left side, Lizzie Howland from Greenfield. It's Walker between the circles. 
They dump it down, nice kick out, right side J from beyond the arc. That shot though is no good. Attempted uh, shot there by uh, number 24. Now the East back on the attack. They hit from the right side. It's Beauregard again. Nice shot, I know. Mallory's looking really good here. And now a run by the East. And that's what I was talking about, Bobby. Yeah. It's usually, the All-Star games are usually a game of runs. And now it's time for the East to make their charge. Out of bounds, it'll stay with the West. And that'll be Lizzie Howell inbounding uh, just off to our left. Looks to get it into Liz Lambert. No, instead goes to Walker. Walker between the circles. Left side pass. Reed, three-pointer. Up, no good. Tipped around. Comes down to the East. Amber Mahoney feeds the lane. Edge, righty lane is no good, however. Nice rebound taken down there. Yeah, Liz Lambert, nice job. Liz Lambert of the Pioneer Panthers. We're down to 13.40 to play here in the first half. It's 12-8 in favor of the West, and a drive through, no good. Uh, Liz Howland will go to the line, shooting a couple here. You know, I was taking a look at who's out on the court right now, Jeff, and I will tell you that this, the purple team, which is the East, has all Franklin County girls. Yep. Yep. They lead right now by a score of 12A, make it 13A as Howland hits the first. Lizzie will get one more. And are we getting a line change here? Yeah, four of the five girls now will be new for the West. The only one who's still out there, of course, is the shooter, Liz Howland. If it's a make, she'll check out. If it's a miss, she'll wait for the next stoppage of play. One more for Howland. That one is good. She will come off. It's a really good line change right there. Yep. Really good line change. All right, 13.39 to play here in the opening half, and it's the West 14 and the East 8. West now back on the attack. Mahoney between the circles. Tricky dribbling. Dribble though into a double team. And she got her pocket pick. East looks to run. West looks to run rather, but it's picked off by Picard. That's from Hopkins Academy, but she got her pocket pick from behind. So yeah, Bobby, they are playing a little bit of defense. They are. <laughs> no question about that. All right, they're back on the attack now. All the way through. Merritt from Franklin County Tech. Misses from the right side. Mauer though gets the rebound. They forgot about the shot clock, shot ladies. Shot clock violation. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't touch the. Uh, that rim. was that was pretty quick, though. That was that was really quick. They're going to go to the scores table. And 15 seconds. They're going to give them 50. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you were right. So it was it. it was somebody over at the scores table. Okay. Yeah, all right. All right. <laughs> Say, man, time's cruising by tonight. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, one of the girls on the court right now for the East is Chloe Ellis from Turner's Falls High School. Who great year. Had a great year. I mean, she really stepped up for Ted Wilcox. Uh, she's uh, obviously going to be going to college. Got accepted at UVM. Three-pointer by Corza on the right side is good. Nice shot right there by Julie. Julie Corza from East Hampton. 17-8 now in favor of the West. Not sure if that's where Chloe's going to go, but uh, obviously a bright girl, a really nice kid too, just like her older brother. On the left side, that shot is no good. Tipped around, that's gonna go out of bounds. It'll go back to the West. Because Chloe really uh, played, and it, it's really no one's fault, but obviously she played in the shadow of her older brother, Liam, who's one of the all-time greats at Turner's. Yeah, and then she had, you know, of course she had Maddie Chimzinski too, who was a big scorer, but I'm gonna tell you what, I think, Chloe Ellis was definitely the player of the year this year for Turners, and she worked really hard, really hard. Nice D. Tanner got <laughs> rejected by Chloe Ellis. Chloe sealing her off on the baseline. We were just, just talking about her. Shot clock down to four. Not sure if they're aware. Another block out there, and nice it finally job. goes back to the east. They trail, however, by nine, 17 8. And got a couple of substitutions coming in. As we're, again, we're getting to learn these girls as we go along. Backing in his edge, through a double team, short with that one. And it comes back down to the west, heading off to our right. Tanner stopping on the wing, they go to right. Foul line jumper, went for the bank a little bit too strong. And Mahoney gets the rebound. We got another timeout here on the floor. We'll step aside for the break, 17-8 in favor of the west here at the All-Star Game on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. All right, play back on, it's Mallory Beauregard of the West All-Stars, at East All-Stars, I should say. I'm directionally challenged so far tonight. I'll get it down, Bobby. 
<laughs> it's all right. They dump it down low. Chloe Ellis went for the bank. No good. Tipped around, and we're going the other way. Wow. No, no. Edge. Edge, Edge nice comes play. back with the steal, and she got fouled down low. And Edge will go to the line. We are talking about uh, Michaela Edge out of South Hadley. That was a really Abbott. aggressive play. First free throw by Edge is good. And Mikhail will get one more. Makes it 17-9. Let's fly the second shot and it's just fell through. Look, looked like it was gonna pop out on her, but it went down. 17-10 West. 11-11 to play here in the opening half. Again, play two 20 minute halves. Girls scoring wise, they will definitely get up there. Tanner's gonna take a deep three ball right side. She's money tonight. Got it, money! He's making a nice bid for Helen, a chemical player of the game. We have a line change coming up now for the West. See who uh, Perry and uh, also Sean Knightley gonna send out there. Chloe Ellis tied up on the right side, loose ball on the floor. It's picked up by the West, back on the attack. All the way through, losing the handle though was Maurer. Back jumper from uh, side, it's a bank shot up and good. That was Claire Bryan, nice shot. Claire Babbitt Bryan, 5'8 senior, of course they're all seniors here. Beauregard dumps it down low on the right side. Oh, a little blind oh. hook shot up and in, that was beautiful. Yeah, we like those. Nice so shot. So Matt the Burks from Belchertown just kind of flung it up there and it went. 22 to 12, 10 point lead. Now for the shot up, Amber Merritt hits on the right side and a foul, and the Franklin Tech Eagle with a shot at a three-point play. Yeah, nice job. You know, that's one of the girls that we really didn't get a chance to see much of this year because of the way that their division is set up, but it was nice to be able to be here and get a little look at Amber Merritt here tonight. I've known Amber for a few years, and she is a really great person. Amber shooting a free throw here, trying to make it a three-point play. Got to get our crowd mic untangled here because we have our All first right. guest of the night. Now we got a line change here. We'll get back to the game here in just a second. 25 to 12 right now in favor of the West. This is one of the, uh, well, let's just say that he's not a rookie no. official. Not a rookie official. Stevie Kreitz is with us. Hey, man. How you doing, guys? Great, great to be here. It's having great. a great time here yeah, at the All-Star game. Absolutely. It's fun. It's this uh, great uh, atmosphere. Here comes the All West the driving through, and they miss on the lay-in, and that ball, oh, just saved by uh, Walker there on the baseline. All right, Steve, serious. All this, all this stuff that we're doing here today is, is to collect money for scholarships for these seniors to apply for, mm -hmm. and um, based on our programs, we've given out over $87,000 to this point, That's which is incredible after all these years. That really is. I remember being part of that committee and uh, handing out a check for $500 to Jason Woodcock, the coach at uh, yes. Belgertown when he was a player yep. back That's in awesome. the day. It's really great, so bud. So it tells you I've just been around a long time. It's my 41st year of refereeing. Okay, Love it. so you go back to the, so you guys back in the day had to get the ladder out and go fetch it out of the peach basket, was uh, that Pretty you? much, yes, <laughs> yes. We, we to, kid, we kid, but I will tell you this, uh, when, you, when you begin, no three-point Oh, uh, absolutely. Line. No three point line. No shot clock. None. And I remember when guys started to really sort of pad their career scoring totals after the implementation of the three point line. I always thought, and, and these kids are great. I'm yes, not they taking are anything, great. but they are incredible athletes and they are skilled, obviously. They play ball year round. But let's not forget those guys that came before. If they had the benefit of that three point line. Boy, there'll be a lot more <laughs> thousand point scores in this valley than there have been. That's Absolutely. for sure. Yeah. You know, and you got to give credit to some of those kids who were able to almost score a thousand points back in the day. And, Absolutely. And, and they Just did it on with a two point. Exactly. Yep. And there are and there are a few of them that have been able to do it. And I know one of them was, I think, Boron from Frontier back in the day, correct. right? That's correct. Yep. Yeah. You had Bain, you had Peter Bain, you had, uh, and, they, and they scored their fair share of points, obviously. But uh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of times we, we pay close attention to the people that have played most recently, and again, deservedly so, but let's not forget those players from back in the day. So you go back, what, mid-70s? Yeah, I started, started in 1978. 1978. Wow. You and Glenn, uh, go, way, go yes, way back. Yes, Glenn goes back to 76, where the two longest. Uh, he and I are both now life members of Board 28. Good. It's quite an honor. So, so the, the obvious people are thinking, to do anything since 1978... <laughs> What is it? What is it about this that uh, keeps you coming back? Because I've known you a long time. Right. You're, you're a mainstay. 
I, I enjoy the game itself. I, it's just a part of me. Uh, basketball is a great sport to have. You've got two officials trying to watch ten people at a time. <laughs> it's, and, uh, you know, for the most part, I do this game for free as, as an official, but it's nice to get compensated for it, and it's just a wonderful thing to watch the kids get better as the years go on and you develop a lot of friendships with your because yeah, you're you're, you're, you're you're individual refs but you're co there's cohesion out there you have to be you have to work together absolutely so that's what it's all about you know you and i go way back my friend and um you know i was just you know reminiscing about how you used to come up to the ymca and also help out with our big tournaments that we used to run up there and if you want to think about it in 1978 when you started me and jeff were 12 year old Gym rats at the YMCA. That's yeah. amazing. We sure were. We were gunners. We, 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 we were gunners. We were both gunners. <laughs> yeah, <there you> go. <laughs> and we never got credit for any of our threes that we used to shoot from downtown. I know. And that was all done with Jerry Donahue way back in that the day. That is correct. Yeah, we got it, we gotta love the bees. He yeah. was one of our favorites. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Alice Summer League down on uh, Davis Street was just a that's was true. A lot of fun. The summer program was fantastic, and boy, we had people from all over the valley that played in oh, that absolutely. league. Absolutely. A lot of the guys from Springfield came up. Sure. We're going, to be, we're going to be coming up on a media timeout here. I hope you can stick on a little bit longer sure. after we come back. All right. Maybe you don't have a chair for you. <laughs> no, I'm good. We're going to feed the lane. And good to see Mary Whalen from the home school team. Yeah. Smith Academy just hit from the right yeah. side. Gets her team back to within nine. It's 26-17 in favor of the West. They've had those Northampton girls really dominate. And now one more possession here for the East now to try to pull a little closer before this timeout. Oh, they're going to just uh, call it as they went over half court. So. They're going to call it right now. Okay, so we will step aside for the timeout. Back with more here in Hatfield after this on Bear Country 95.3. All right, back here at Smith Academy, and it's the West with the ball with the lead. They miss a shot from the left side. The rebound cleared by Demers. And now Halgus of uh, Ware brings him up. We have Steve Kreitz, veteran official, here in Western Mass, a mainstay. So let, let me ask you this. What, what is it like? I, I have an idea of what it might be like, but for 32 minutes of clock time, but it's about an hour and a half of, of actual time during a game, close game, heated game, and you are hearing it from those coaches. I mean, you are getting blasted. You're not pleasing, you're, you're pleasing one guy but not the other, and then, and, then, and then in reverse, depending on what you guys called. And then somehow, when you see after the game, it's all good. You see these guys around town, it's all good. But what, what is it like to have that kind of relationship with these coaches who, they are all over you guys. The fans are all over you guys, and it's like, okay, we're, you know, it's all good. Well, it's just part of the game. Uh, we anticipate it to happen. We know our certain coaches will be a little more vociferous than others. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's just one of those things that happens. You tr you try not to take it personal. Um, if they do get out of line, we always have that technical foul to kind of quiet them down a little bit. But generally, uh, as they get to know you over the years, they know how well you officiate, and, and they just are able to say it and let it go, and others they hang on to those calls that they don't like that's when you kind of have to say you know enough's enough and and move on but yeah after the game's over you see them around they happy to see you yeah yeah no they, problem they know they know you're just doing and, their yeah, job yeah. absolutely i have another question for you sure and this one I'm, I'm really eager to hear your answer because i've had officials say no we don't do makeup calls it's not like we realize we missed a call and then on the other end we're going to call a, a phantom travel or three you know three second or whatever I've, I've had most officials say it doesn't happen. I have had an unnamed official say, if we have to, we'll do it. And the other co the coach that was mad at us knows that's what we're doing. What is your answer? Do you even want to volunteer an answer? Uh, I, my, <laughs> uh, my answer is because of, of who I am, I, it's never a makeup call. Never, never, never done. No, you, can, you can have a missed call. And you can acknowledge that to a coach as you go up to court saying, you know, I really did miss that. And they appreciate that And they kind appreciate of thing. The, the candor, and I, I bet. And yeah. uh, the honesty about that. But, no, I don't turn around and say, well, i got to help them out somewhere down the yeah. line. Have you wondered about that, though, Bob? Because no, I, I, yeah, because I think there's some of them that you wonder because of the play. You know, you say to yourself, wow, that was a close play. Well, you know, maybe he would have been able to get away with that if he... Uh, <laughs> if he was a little quieter two and a half minutes ago. Yeah. Well, we're not going to have Mike Churchill on because he's the PA guy, but I guess we'll leave it with this. And you, I know you don't have the information per se, but 
you know, it, they're, you're always looking for new officials. Officials move on. Eventually, you won't be out there. It's hard to believe, right, but there's going to come the day when you and Glennie and some other guys won't be doing this anymore, and you want to have the young people coming up. If you could just speak to how much fun it is, what a great workout it is, the friendships, and uh, hopefully this will appeal to some people because we do need officials. Oh, definitely. Um, we have that starts in October. Um, it's a wonderful way to, as you say, get exercise up and down the court, know the game of basketball a little better than you thought you did before. Mm -hmm. uh, the camaraderie that we do have amongst members, the support that you get within the, the organization itself. And uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing. And it's a nice avocation so you can get uh, a little extra pin money for the season to help out for yourself. It, it's just a wonderful thing. I mean, the game of basketball is, to me, the, the most favorite sport on the earth. Just yeah. like 10 people running around and then be able to put a small ball through a hoop. Amazing. We'll have to tell you, I uh, tip of the cap to you and the rest of you guys. I, I love seeing you guys all winter long, and I love seeing you guys in your little section at the cage when we go down there. Where you guys uh, indeed we all wa the watch the game and w wait to work your game. And if you're lucky enough, you get assigned down there. And I know that you you know you you, you get you get some really nice assignments. So thanks a lot well, for all you've done all these years. Guys. Good luck. Thank you, Steve. Yep. You know, and the other thing I want to say, Steve, is, is that it's always nice that every time that we're at a broadcast, you all, every one of you guys come up, say hello, and welcome us every time. Oh, absolutely. It's fun. You guys are a great part of the game. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank really you so appreciate much. it. Good to see you, Kreitzy. All right. Steve Kreitz joining us now. And we have back to the game, the girls' all-star game. And they have the Northampton girls out there for the West team right now. They lead only by three now. Make it six as a three-pointer. She is having a game. Emma Tanner right now has 11 of the 31 points for the West. 30, and Maddie Chimzinski, she's gonna fire a tray. No good, tipped around. Here comes Maurer back the other way for the West All-Stars leading 31-25, five and a half to play here. That was a nice conversation by Steve Kreitz. I had to ask him about the makeup call. Yeah, and that was a really good interview because he's been around a long time. No, he has seen it all, man. He I remember seen seeing him all. when he first started back when we were gym rats when I was helping out Jerry yeah. Donahue over at the Y doing the clock. So, Edge, a little crossover dribble, tipped around. Matty Chimzinski with a nice save, kicks it over on the left side. Shot clock though down to 10. And yeah, Matty Chimzinski, she's going to take a three. Left corner partially blocked, no good. Mary Whalen, weak side from Smith, goes up. She got fouled. She'll go to the line for two. Later on tonight, we're going to try to hook up with Nate Burdick, a very well-spoken guy. You're talking about an official. He became an official, Bobby, and usually it's a slow, steady process. You know, you start by working middle school games in the afternoon, and then some JV assignments, some varsity games. Eventually, maybe you get to do a tournament. Yep. Eventually, if you're real good, you go to the cage. I tell you, when Nate Burdick started, he just shot up through the ranks. Next thing you know, he's working these huge uh, plum assignments. He's a very good official. He's a great official, and he's a great friend, too. And uh, he's my cousin, and uh, we're very, very fortunate to have Nate and his family in our lives. And it's exciting for him coming up, and we could talk about this during the interview, but he's getting married That's uh, right. coming up in the month of April. And why do you think he waited till April, Jeff? Because <laughs> <laughs> basketball would be over. Hitting from the left side. Right puts that one up and in. That was a great job right there. Megan Wright from Gateway. By Megan, yes. In Gateway, uh, they have a lot. They have a lot of fans here tonight. A lot, a lot of her family happens to be here. A little finger roll as Edge comes through, but she got blocked and fouled. Are we going to take a media timeout here? It's 4:21. No. Edge will go to the line. This is now. Uh, this is Abby Edge. Both of these girls are very aggressive going to the basket. The Edge. The Edge twins. First shot is up and good. They're from South Hadley. Four new players out there, including from Turner's Falls, Chloe Ellis checking out there. Also out there is Mahoney, who has looked good. Amber Mahoney from Athol, good ball handler. She's been impressive tonight. Abby Edge, one more free throw. That one is good. She will come off, replaced by Beauregard. It's 33-29 in favor of the West All-Stars, the boys game to follow. And actually, we're going to have the uh, ceremony now for uh, coming up here at this four-minute spot for Dave Keir, who is uh, this year's Fred Cove Memorial Award winner. Left side, three ball, put up, in and out, no good. Battle for the rebound. Amber Merritt couldn't quite come up with it. I think once they go over half court, they're going to stop the game here. Nope, not quite yet. Just nope. under four. Picard got it away. They get it. Borgard, top of the key. Drives the lane. Lefty lane is good. <laughs> nice shot. 
We will stop the game here at this point. And uh, I believe we're going to do the ceremony here. Well, we'll, we'll step aside for a quick one minute break here back after this on Bear Country. Financial support for FCAT's coverage of local high school sports provided by Leader Home Centers, your hometown home center with five locations to serve you in Amherst, South Deerfield, Barry, Greenfield, and Brattleboro, Vermont, or online at leaderhome.com. Visit them for all your building material needs. Raymond Financial Services, LLC. Take charge of your financial future. Insurance, investments, and benefits for individuals and employers. Attorney Daniel Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan's a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield office at 773-8706 for all your legal needs. All right, play back on. It's a single possession game now. 33-31 in favor of the West. They have the ball. Tanner will go right baseline. Guarded by Beauregard. Mauer left side. Off the back rim, no good. It comes down to Beauregard. Beauregard being pestered by Tanner. Runs it up in the front court. Left gets a screen. Nicely done there by Mahoney. Chloe Ellis, top of the key. Here comes Edge. Stripped on the way up. Poked around, but... She got Edge, it back. Edge gets it right back. Left baseline, throws it up. Doesn't quite get the bounce. Now the rebound, and she got fouled. And Looks like Tanner's gonna... going up for ones here, right? Yeah. She should. Yep. Oh, they're not going to... Oh, do they? Oh, that, that was the uh, that was the fifth team oh, foul. Oh, fifth team foul. Sorry about that, Jeff. Fifth team foul on these, so not quite shooting All yet. All right. We often will go through a half. I will tell you this, Bobby, since this is your uh, first time here. That, yeah. Uh, oftentimes, we don't get into the uh, bonus or, or the double bonus. Coming through his edge, and she had the ball poked away as she went up. It goes out of bounds. It'll stay with the east. They trail by two. The west has had the lead most of this half here, and I know... People, we talked to Steve Kreitz, we talked to Kreitzy for a while, so we kind of stepped away. And that's a kick, and they will reset the shot clock. Now, at some point, I was mentioning Dave Keir, the athletic director here, Greenfield native, longtime AD. He will be getting the, the Tom Cove Memorial Award. Shot up and no good. Amber Merritt, the rebound. Back the other way. Watch out for Tanner downtown. Comes to the west. They're trying to get it to her. She can bang. Ryan's going to go along the baseline. Triple team. Kicks it over there. Mauer. And now Tanner has a top of the key. Ooh, she wanted <laughs> to pull the trigger. She really did. Here comes Merritt. Nice dish into the paint. Putting it up and in. That was a great play right there by Merritt. A nice entry pass to right. Megan right out of gateway. Hit the bucket. 35-31. Saw the lead back up to four. Edge traveling and she got tied up at the top of the key. Line change for the West. I think they're going to come out with Gorza. Uh, uh, Julie Gorza is one of them from East Hampton. Is she out there? Yeah. This is her crew and they got the Mohawk girls out there. Emma Popolowski and uh, Ashley Walker. Here's the question of the night. Lizzie Howland. Do they end in a tie or do they go with a little OT? Oh yeah. We've had, I, we've had OT before. Okay. Walker, right baseline, blocked by Ellis. And the putback up and no good by Howland. Here comes Beauregard for the east. They trail by four. Beauregard stops, pops, rainbow three. Front rim, no. Deep rebound comes to Ashley Walker from Mohawk. Swings a pass. Lizzie Howland. Corza. Julie Corza. Rejected by Chloe Ellis. Nice Big play block. by Chloe. Picard of Hopkins Academy takes it across the timeline. Only a minute 40 now left here in the half. Coming on through, shot up and in, nicely done there. That's by Edge, that's uh, by Michaela Edge. Yeah, she is really, she's really done a great job down low. And she's been at the free throw line six times here in the game. 35-33, now we have a held ball. The arrow will favor the West, so they will keep it here. The other award that will be uh, announced here tonight, Belchertown High School is getting the Sportsmanship Award. Again, that voted on by the officials. In and out, no good for Julie Kors, the top of the key. Comes back to Mikhail Edge. Loops the pass way up on the right. Picard of Hopkins backs it back out on the wing. Gets it in. All the way through Mahoney. Off the glass, no good. Had a chance to tie that game. No, here comes the West the other way. One minute to play here. 
in the first half. Ooh, nearly a travel. But on the left side, shot up Emma and in. Reed. Reed, Emma Reed from Nice Mark job, Stella. Emma. That was a great shot. 37-33 West, so the East keeps getting close, but the West has pretty much led throughout. Oh, nice entry pass in the lane, Edge misses, Michaela got the rebound, back to Chloe Ellis, can't get the shot away. Back on the right side, Edge, jumper from the right baseline is good. She's having a good game on the other side for the East. Michaela, nice job there, 37-35 West, down to the last 25 seconds here in the first half. Poplowski, left side, in and out, no good. Put back, follow, up and in by Lizzie Howland of GHS. Nice play right there by Lizzie. 39-35, as the scoring is really coming. Ooh, they air milled the pass well over the head of Chloe Ellis. And with 11.5 seconds left, the West will have it for one more shot. Corza, she'll jog it across, eight seconds left. She's going to attack it, down low, kicked around, out of bounds. It'll go back to, you know, one official say one thing. Yeah, Mark Wickles and his partner, they're going to keep it with the West. 4.8 seconds left. Plenty of time to set a screen and get a good shot away here if they can. In the Howland. Through a double team. Puts it up. No good. And that'll do it. Halftime here at Smith Academy on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. It's the West All-Stars 39, the East 35. This is Bear Country 95.3. Halftime here at Smith Academy Webb Gymnasium, the girls all-star game, 2018 style in the West leads 39 to 35. At the top of the show, Bobby, I said sometimes it can be a little sloppy because the girls aren't playing together. They, they haven't played for a couple of weeks necessarily, but I thought that was a very well-played first half. Yeah, and, I'm, and they played defense, too. There was some really good defensive plays in that first half. I really was entertained by the way these girls played on both ends. And look at the score right now at 39-35. It is a close game, just like you said. And it does go in a, in a game of runs. It yep. really has done that. Yep. And it really depends on like the line change that ends up being put out by these coaches here tonight. So the West leads by four. A couple of girls have stood out uh, mo most appreciably. One of them uh, from Northampton High School. Yeah, she's done a wonderful job and a huge congratulations so far in the first half. Goes out to Emma Tanner. You know, she is a really great athlete and really did a nice job in her tournament run for her school at Northampton. She has 11 here tonight to lead the way and she is leading all scorers for both teams. And on the other side for the East, Michaela Edge from South Hadley is leading the way with nine points, but followed Right behind is Mallory Beauregard from Granby High School. So pretty uh, nice balanced scoring, honestly, for both teams. A lot of people are in the scoring column. All right, we are set for the second half. 20 more minutes of basketball. Maybe it'll take more than 20 more minutes of basketball. It will be the East now attacking the basket on our right here in the second half. They trail by four. The boys game to follow, Dave Keir. Sometime this half, I believe, we'll be getting the Tom Cole Memorial Award. Maddie Chimzinski for three. Short on that one. Mary Whalen, though, from Smith, was able to save it. Gets it back edge. Gets it over to Burks. Burks on the right side from Belchertown. She gets rejected, though. Nice defensive play there by Wright, who's had a fine night out of Gateway. Huntington Mass, the Gators. On the right side, three ball up and no good. Edge will get the rebound. That is... Uh, is that Abby or Michaela? It's number two, that's Abby Edge. Abby takes it across, drives the paint, stripped on the way up, nice D by Tanner. She's having a great night. Tanner back the other way, he's gonna take it coast to coast, no, dishes it right side, jumper is no good. Rebound, they get it over on the left side. Taking it back out is Maurer into the left corner, three ball short. And Tanner with a great over the head save on the baseline to Maurer. She is doing it all. On left side, shot is blocked, but a foul. Tanner is just everywhere tonight. She's got a huge smile on her face too. <laughs> and she's also like, huh. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that, fun. that was pretty funny. That was a nice little run right there for her. And still making her free throws too. Well, what's nice, Bobby, in a normal regular season or tournament game, it's a 32-minute game. The starters will play 28 to 31 minutes, I would say, Bobby, probably the the really the, the premier players. Sure. And Makes on a night sense. a night like tonight, you you know you play hard for three, four minutes and then and then you're out. So yep. you, can, you can take a break. 
So it's not quite the workload they're used to. Matty Chimzinski, that shot is no good. Nice save by Burks, however, it went to right to Liz Lambert, a pioneer. Here comes Tanner, top of the key. Oh, nice crossover dribble. Kicks it right side, Maurer will launch for three, got it! Wow, between Maurer and Tanner, the two girls from Northampton High School, they are looking good, and they're a key part of the offense here tonight. Well, again, that's the benefit. They play uh, as teammates all year long, obviously, and they, they have played recently, just the other day, in fact. They were playing in the state tournament. Left side, Maddie Chinzinski, she'll take a three, that's no good. Lambert clears the board, gets it to Tanner. 43-35 as the West now starting to pull away a little bit. Mauer, another three ball, that's too strong, no good. Mary Whalen from Smith gets the rebound. She'll take it across left side, loops up ahead to Chimzinski. Going baseline, trying to save it on the baseline, but it up in the hands of Tanner. That quickly between the circles. A teammate from Northampton, a little crossover dribble. It's Mauer in the left corner. She'll work it out. Again, the three Northampton girls out there right now. Coming through, Tanner sealed off there. Back to Mauer, top of the key. Shot clock down to 10. Coming on through, shot clock now down to six. They're in big trouble. Mauer left corner, four seconds left. Two left, finally. Tanner lets it go at the buzzer, no good. And they get the rebound and a new shot clock. Wow. But now a steal momentarily, nicely done by Chimzinski. They get it back, Maddie gets it right back. Easy lay-in from the right side. Nice play by Maddie. That's what she needs to do. She needs to continue to attack the basket and not be shooting all those threes here tonight. Maddie, do what you do best. Go to the hole. 43-37 in favor of the West. We're down to 16-47 to play here in the second half. Again, during the regular year, four eight-minute quarters. Tonight, two 20-minute halves. Tipped around off the miss, out of bounds. It'll go back to the East All-Stars, I think. Line change for the West. And we're going to see what? The Mohawk girls again. We're going to see usually. Yeah, it's that same. What it is is it's the Franklin County girls that are coming in and Julie uh, Corza. Yep. It's, it's, that's exactly what it is. On the right side, three ball. It's put up by Corza. No good. Offensive rebound by Poplowski. Corza with a one that hit the Raptors almost. No good. Attempted save on the baseline. It goes back to the east. Nice hustle right there by Amber Merritt. She almost was able to get that inside and between the Mohawk girls, Amber Merritt and Corza, that's your team right there for the west. All right. change in for the east too, huh? Yep. Yep. You know, there's, uh, we have Beauregard out there. We have uh, the other edge. We've got Demers out there. It's 43-37 in favor of the west. East has the ball. Beauregard gets it on the left side. And losing as she came through was uh, Haugus out of bounds. And we have our radio timeout. 16-14 to play. Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. The West leads the East 43-37. All right, we're back here. Webb Gymnasium in Hatfield. It's the night of the All-Star game. Always the night before the state championship. Emma Popolowski from the left side for the West. No good. Here comes the East trailing by six. They get it down low. Bank shot from the left side is good. Michaela Edge Michaela is having Edge. a night too, bud. Yeah. She, she's leading the way, no doubt, for the East. Shot up on the right side is no good by Poplowski. They get it back. Corza will take a three. Left side, no good. Put back, no good. Third time was the charm. Emma Poplowski hits it. Nice job right there by Emma. She was able to get that rebound and put it right up. 45-39 in favor of the West. Again, they have led throughout. Three-pointer from the right side is up and no good by Picard of Hopkins goes out of bounds and the West will get it back. And we have back-to-back -back state title games tomorrow for you here on Bear Country. 3.15 is our broadcast time. We have East Hampton boys taking on Watertown and then that'll be followed by the Hampshire girls taking on Archbishop Williams for the girls D3 final. Back-to-back -back games on Championship Saturday. Shot from the left side for the East. No good, but they get the offensive rebound. Picard gets it. Here is Edge. Zips a pass in the lane. Beauregard turns, shoots. A little bit short on that one. Rebound taken down by Emma Poplowski. Gets it over to Walker. Walker takes it across the timeline right. Gets it over. Reed, deep three ball. No good. Corza, though, the weak side of rebound. Has on the baseline. Poked away. Recaptured, though. 
They go back. Reed will take another three. That one's an air ball out of bounds. Back to the east. You know, really nice, nice rebounding there by the the West. But what they need to do is is they need to you know set their shot before they shoot. Nice take. Oh, all the way through. Haugus drives the lane, hits the shot, she'll go the line with a chance at a three-point play. Bobby, going back to the other night, down at oh. AIC. Oh, my goodness, um, brother. That was, uh, what a performance by uh, by the two local teams. I personally think that we got a chance to bring home two trophies. I really do. I think both teams are playing really good basketball they, right uh, now. They're playing their best basketball of the season at the perfect time. I agree. They kick it left side. All the way through Ashley Walker, top of the key. Emma Reed fakes it. Walker has it right side. This is it off. Reed will take it from 18. That's a little bit short. Rebound taken down by the East. I want to talk about these uh, Mohawk girls in a little bit. Okay, we have an opportunity here. It goes out of bounds. Sure. Great year for them. That program now starting to come along. Larissa Meyer, the coach. Of course, she just lost her dad, Chuck. That was a tough one as, he, uh, uh, as, as cancer ended up. Uh, taking Chuck away from us uh, not all that long ago, but uh, they're definitely on the upswing, and they have a very young, energetic coach, which is always a big help. She is, and I just want to say that to the Miner family that they're a strong family, man, and they went through a lot this year, and all these girls were at the funeral because I was there, and they had their own section to be there for their coach, and that just was so touching. Matter of fact, I had tears in my eyes just when I walked in there because of that, Jeff. It's a great honor yeah. to a great man. That was a tough one. It was such a it was such a uh, strange experience. The night that Reagan Hickey got her 1,000th point, it was against Mohawk. Yep. And it was Chuck. It was a Chuck Strong night there, um, it, as the two schools and the two communities came together for Chuck Minor. And it was just tough because uh, obviously it was a happy occasion with uh, Greenfield's uh, star getting her thousandth point in her junior year, by the way, which is pretty rare. But it was just the cloud. We knew that you know Chuck couldn't be there that night. He really wasn't feeling well. Ultimately, it wasn't that long after that that uh, that he passed away. But yeah. it was just it was a tough situation, and it was uh, just sad to see a, such a great, great guy uh, pass away. Fifty nine. That is young. Fifty nine. And you know the other thing that was special about that night, though, is Reagan Hickey gets her thousandth. But what a lot of people don't understand is that Coach John Hickey and and the family they spent a lot of years you know in Buckland as residents and then he ended up being the athletic director at Mohawk for yep. many years so the tie that they had with that family was pretty tight so it really was a special night for really both communities that evening all right the West lead is now down to one. The East had a chance to take the lead, but they get a steal. Here comes West the other way. Shot up short. A lot of contact down there. No foul call. What a move. Mauer. <laughs> that, was a guy. that was a great move. Mauer hits. 47-44. Edge hands the ball to Beauregard. Looking to the right. Demers was guarded. Work a little curl. Driving all the through. Haugus can't hit. Rebound tipped around out of bounds. It'll stay with the East, they trailed by three. They got it down to one. This has been a close game throughout. Sure biggest, has. biggest lead was 10. Now a steal by Lizzie Howland. Shuffle pass on the right side. Taking it across is Babbitt Bryan. Now are up fakes. Pull up pop from 15. That is short. She might be a little gassed. Seeing, uh, yeah, again, the, the pace usually, you know, the, these girls and later on the boys, they want to put on a show. They don't have a good game, they want to have fun, but they like to put on a show. I can't wait for you to watch the boys, though, Bobby. Uh, <laughs> I know you've never seen the All-Star game here until tonight, so this is going to be a treat for you. Yes. Haugus misses. Tip followed by Haugus. No good. Comes down to right, who's had a big night. Closely guarded by Picard, who can't the steal momentarily. But Lizzie Howland got it back. Jumper from the right side, up and in for Babette Bryan. Timeout on the floor. 12-13 to play here. In the second half, Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard, the West leads the East 47-44. Break it through, the girl from B-Town, fouled. That is Burks. All right, play back on now, and Samantha Burks out of B-Town will go to the line, the 5'7", I keep saying 5'7", senior, they're all seniors. That's right. <laughs> So hey, getting... I wanted to bring up something I thought would be uh, nice for folks to hear. That sure. This East Hampton team that we had a chance to enjoy watching this year, the one thing that I have to say is you want to talk about a classy team. 
these guys were the most nicest, classiest guys. And I don't think Watertown has probably ever heard of East Hampton, Massachusetts. <laughs> but I will tell you what, <laughs> they're tomorrow, about to find they're going to find out who East Hampton is. And yeah. they're also going to find out that they better be in shape, okay? Because if Watertown is not in shape, they're in trouble tomorrow in Springfield. They try to go back door to Mauer, tipped out of bounds, and it'll stay with the West. They lead by three, 49-46. Bobby, you're obviously <laughs> referring to what we saw at ASC the oh, other night. Where, unbelievable. Where that, those kids from Sutton, particularly uh, their, main, their main gun, grabbing his shorts, gasping for air, asking, uh, he didn't ask out of the game, but he may as well have. He wasn't making it up and down the court. He I mean, wasn't. He, 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 literally was, he literally was taking breaks. And he was That's a, how bad it was. And, he, and they, had to get, they had to pull him off. Yeah. Uh, because he was actually, as good a player as he was, he was actually hurting his team yeah. by not, not running the floor anymore. Nice look down low and Burks hits. Yeah. Tell you right now, you know, and you can't take nothing away from Buffoni because he had a wonderful game, but you know, but, but he was tired, man. They, they ran him ragged. They did. And, uh, I think he slept pretty well that night. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he did. And I'll tell you right now, East Hampton worked hard for all 32 minutes. There's yeah, no doubt did. about it. They did. And they, you know, even, even, okay, I see some of the, uh, the boys players uh, have arrived getting set to uh, put on their show. And they always do. Even if it's a slow start. Three-pointer put up by Tanner is no good. And we have a held ball. The arrow will favor the West. Their lead, folks, is now down to one. The East has not been able to climb all the way back to take a lead. But obviously, two very evenly matched teams. The format used to be the Hampshire All-Stars versus Franklin, which made it tough. Because even if you had a year where you had a really great team from Franklin County, like, say, Frontier or Turners, wherever it might be, Pioneer, you were playing much bigger schools, Amherst and Northampton, South Hadley, and it usually was the Hampshire All-Stars that would win, and sometimes it was kind of a blowout. Now they just kind of split it geographically for uh, for the East and West. And, and what a great idea. I mean, yeah. I think that was a great idea. And like I was telling at the beginning of the broadcast, I think it's great that they get to be able to play with each other. Nice play right there. Chloe Ellis Lewis. has given the East <laughs> the lead at 50-49. to 49. This game has been very, very interesting. That was a really great play by Chloe. Yeah, I'm glad I got to see her play one more time. Natty from Turner's. You know, we cover a lot of these girls, but uh, Franklin County Schools. Now a miss by the East. Rebound to Burks, who has played well. Over on the right, Mahoney will drive through. Big block by Howland. It was a clean block, no foul. Is he? Goes out of bounds. It'll stay with the East. Well, speaking that, uh, of the girls, Jeff, um, you know, one of the girls who would have put on a great show here tonight is not here because their team oh, is in. Pekunka. And Kaylin Pakanka is so special to watch, and I am a huge fan of her. But I'm also going to let you know that the one other thing that made it fun for me was to be able to watch some of her other teammates do well, like Maddie Pond and, and Caroline O'Connor, a couple of girls that really stepped it up, Jeff. So tomorrow, if you get a chance to get to Springfield College, you're going to see some great, great basketball. It doesn't get much better in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. This is it. Championship Saturday state version. Mary Whalen headed off down court, but had it poked away by Tanner. Battle for the ball. Still loose. Picked up by Chloe Ellis of the West. They lead by one after trailing the whole night. Mary Whalen from Smith. Going left baseline. Muscles away through. Puts it up and in off the glass from the left block. You know, in the last couple of years, Mary Whalen has really improved her basketball game. Tanner really for three in the tie. Oh. Tanner knocks down the tray. We're tied at 52. And the bucket is good. Well, just so you know, since it's your first uh, All-Star Night broadcast, Bobby, this is when Chris and I start to kind of hone in. <laughs> you know, obviously, we talk about a lot of things. We have, uh, we have a lot of guests that come by. We miss a lot of action. But now, when, once we get under eight, we really we do it almost like a straight basketball game. Nearly a steal. And a foul is called. That is going to go on Mahoney with the shove, so foul there on Amber. It'll be the East, uh, rather the West's possession in a 52 all tie. They had a 10 point lead at one point, but it uh, now is a tie game. And we're just about halfway through the second half. Again, two 20 minute halves, so 40 minutes of basketball a la college. On the left side, Poplowski, partially blocked, comes away to the East again. Trying to reclaim the lead. Mahoney goes baseline, flings it down low. No, nope, not sure if that was a shot or a pass, but it ended up getting picked off by the West. And now their shot to claim the lead. Walker gets it to Julie Corzo, right side read. Pump fake, pulls it back, gets it. 
Foul line right, shot up and no good by Emma Poplowski. Comes down to Chloe Ellis. Gets it up ahead, coming on through now. Mahoney in the right corner. She'll put up a jumper, in and out, no good. Mary Whale in the putback, no. And it comes down to Ashley Walker, up ahead on the right. Corza, cross court passes, batted down. Loose ball on the floor. Picked up, shot up from the right block, no good. Chloe Ellis now comes through. All the way through on the right side. Chloe attacking the basket, puts it up, no good. They are starting to play some pretty good defense right now here. All of a sudden, you got a 52-52 tie, and things are really changing. Well, Corza now is going to go right baseline. What happens is teams decide, yep, it's time to win the game. Shot up and in from the left side nice by shot. Amber Merritt. Nice shot by Amber Merritt from the Franklin County Tech School. We'll step aside 54-52 in favor of the West on Bear Country 95.3. All right, we are back on. Maddie Chimzinski has the ball for the East. They trail by two, 54 to 52. Chimzinski has it now. She'll take a three. No good. Rebound by Picard. Nice pass to Beauregard. Pull a pop in the lane. Is good. Boy, that was a really nice take right there. And a nice pass into Beauregard. We're tied again at 54. Great ball game here. Three ball right side. Reed, no good. Rebound taken down by Amber Merritt. Back on the wing for three. That shot is too strong, however, by Corza. From uh, East Hampton High School. On the right side, Picard. Hopkins Academy hits from the right. Wow, nice take right there by Picard. Her first two of the night. 56-54 in favor of the East. They reclaim the lead. A three-point bomb put up on the right side is no good. It goes out of bounds. And we're going to go the other way here. So we're coming out to the four-minute mark of the girls' all-star game. And I'm quite certain that is when we're going to have the presentation of the awards, Sportsmanship Award for Belchertown High School, as well as for Dave Keir, Tom Cove Memorial Award winner. Shot is blocked uh, from edge of shot is blocked. Loose ball on the floor. Oh, Maddie Chinzewski went after it. Couldn't quite get it away from Poplowski. Little spin move. Losing control though is Corza. Coming back the other way is Edge. Right side lays it up and in. Count it and a blocking foul called against Walker. Michaela Edge is a really, really disciplined basketball player and has really had a great night. The girl from South Hadley has shown her true talents, but not only her drive ability, but how about at the line? She's having a great night there, too. South Hadley, a great basketball school, boys and girls. We'll see Calvin Bridges from the Tigers out here once we get to the uh, boys game. <laughs> the referees. What it happened? Was, it was the basket went in, so she only had one shot. And, yeah. they, and she took her one shot, and everybody stood there. <laughs> that was great. You always, yeah, you always see something a little bit kooky on All-Star Game yeah, Night. Yeah, that, that was pretty good. All right, 6.40 to play. It's now a four-point lead for the East, which is the designated home team here. Corza, shuffle pass. Oh, nice give and go, but it's picked off. Beauregard on the right side. Stops. Passes it down low. Loose ball in the paint. Ooh. And Poplowski rips it out of the arms of Picard. <laughs> Leah, just, <laughs> Leah just got flung away. She's okay. <laughs> Poor Leah. I, and we said they weren't playing Oh, she defense? got a foul called against oh. her, too. Leah, oh, man. <laughs> I thought that was all ball because she sort of was <laughs> hanging on to the ball so she wouldn't get flung the other side of the court. <laughs> all right. The West would love a bucket here. They've been stuck on 54 for a while now. They now trail by four. Poplowski from the foul line, loses it, ends up on the floor, rolling around, that's gonna be a travel. It has to be, yeah. yeah that's right out, That's right out of the rule book. <laughs> if you have the ball and you roll, then they're going to say traveling, and that's exactly what they yes, did. Yes, exactly. All right, play continues now. On the left side, a deep shot up and no good. Back quickly now comes Walker, poked away from behind, but picks it back up, lays it up and in, they're back to within two. Yeah, nice job right there by Ashley Walker. Walker. Nice take to the basket, and that was her first two of the night. Ooh, it could have been a travel. Edge, top of the key, right of the lane, slithers away through, flings it up there, doesn't quite get the roll. Walker got the rebound, got tipped out of bounds. It'll go back to the West with a chance to tie or take the lead with 5.43 to play. Now you're seeing subs within, within the, the actual game action, not just waiting for the timeouts. Well, it's a two-point game. This is working out wonderful, and the crowd's really started to fill in here at Sherry Webb Gymnasium. Yep, yep. There'll be a big crowd for the boys' game, for sure. Several hundred people, close, close to 1,000. 
A dump it down low. Pop lost. Got to go roll right around her arm and across her back. Here comes Jim Zinski. Nice D, but a blocking foul called against Corza because Maddie was going to go baseline. You know, when Maddie takes her time at the free throw line, she is very, very effective. So this could be two huge shots for the East. They lead by two. First is up. It is good. 59-56 East. One more for Matty Chimzinski. Second free throw. That is good as well. So the lead now back to four for the East. 60-56. 5.15 to play here in regulation. We have the four-minute timeout coming up here momentarily. Now a held ball. The arrow will favor the West. So they will keep it now on the arrow. Nice job right there by Michaela Edge to be able to tie that up with Poplowski. Both teams each have five fouls in the half as well. Some of these girls will play basketball collegiately. For some of these girls, though, this will be it. This will be their last real competitive basketball game. Walker on the right baseline. Top of the key to Corza. Corza on the right wing. Guarded closely by Chimzinski. Maddie going for the poke away. Can't quite get it. Emma Poplowski, your pass, though, get, does get picked off. Here comes the East the other way. All the way through. Maddie off the glass. No good. And the tip follow-up. Count it. Wrigley out of Athol. Destiny hits, and she has a shot at a three-point play. What a huge shot right there by her because she picked up her first two points of the night. So Destiny Wrigley having a chance for a three-point play. And line, a line change, yeah. Line change for the West. They have the Northampton girls out there. They've got Lizzie Howland out there as well. And they have that girl from, uh, from Gateway who's really impressed me today, Megan Wright. Yeah, Is she's really good? good. So she's out there as well. All right. Wrigley's free throw. In and out, no good. Rebound comes down to edge out of bounds. It's, ooh, there, I thought it was off of edge herself, but they're yeah. going to keep it with the East, leading now by six as they have started to pull away just a little bit. They at one time trailed by 10. Top of the key, Borgard to edge. Michaela from 19. That shot is no good. Howland skies for the rebound. Hands to Tanner. This is the crew that really has gotten it done for the West. Let's see if they can pull off the victory here. So we come down to the four minute mark. Lizzie Howland. On the right elbow, Tanner, top of the key, stops, pivots, frees herself for a jumper from the free throw line, no good, got her own rebound, new shot clock for the east, for the west rather. Right side, jumper is good, Maurer. Bailey Maurer has had a nice night herself as well. Ooh, and a big turnover right there. And the east is going to send a new crew out there with Ellis and Abby Edge and Mary Whalen. And a couple other girls will get those in there. I tell you right now, I think these are the girls that might finish it out. Coming through now on the left side. Tanner fakes the three, drives left baseline, hits the jumper. It's 62-60. Emma Tanner. Boy, she is explosive on both ends. Good defense, good offense. What a complete player. Running it up on the left side. Three ball left side by Edges. No good. Now a chance to tie once again for the West. Coming all the way through. Tanner, top of the key. Three for the lead. Short. Very well in the rebound. Nice crossover dribble. Taking it down court. All the way through. Loses the handle though. And now foul. Blocking foul is going to be called on Jordan Halgis. And we will take the timeout. And we will take a quick. Well, we're going to keep it right here. Thank you all for coming tonight. I'll we'll take this opportunity to congratulate all the seniors participating in the all the fans out here as well to support our Casey Scholarship. Our Casey Scholarship uh, gives out approximately $3,000. Uh, a year, and all the money raised tonight goes directly to high school seniors. Uh, the first of two awards tonight is our 428 Jack Newman Sportsmanship Award. We received nominations from schools all over Franklin and Hampshire County, and it is then voted upon. This year, the Jack Newman Sportsmanship Award is presented to Belcher Town High School.
Dr. Tom Hutchinson tonight is represented by Bruce Hastings, the athletic director, Jason Woodcock, Matthew Stennis, and Christopher Shea. Congratulations, Dr. Tom Hutchinson. And the second of two awards tonight is our Tom Cove Award. Tom Cove was a basketball official, a mentor to many, many uh, of our current officials. And to present the Tom Cove Award is Board 28 Vice President Bobby Betzel. to coaches, athletic directors, uh, referees, and, and even uh, radio personnel who have contributed. Uh, tonight's recipient uh, I'm proud to present has actually filled several of those roles. Uh, he was an official on Board 28 from 1995 until 2016. Previously before that on the Girls Franklin Board, worked in college as well. Um, and we'll be retiring here to the Academy as what has athletic director and teacher coming out. I'm uh, proud to present this year's Tom Cole Award to Mr. David Tier. And we are definitely going to have Dave on the program here a little bit later on as he will take that great award home. We are set for basketball to return here. We'd like to thank everyone for their support of the IABO scholarships through our attendance tonight and the 50-50 raffle. Thank you to our winner who donated a portion of the money back to the scholarship fund. Thank you very much. tell you right now this is a great event and uh, now that I know a little more about what it is surely if I have an evening off I will be back next year and Jeff by the way I want people to know that are maybe new to this that you were a recipient of this a couple of years ago and a big congratulations to a guy who has dedicated so much to the game himself so thank you much Bobby you're welcome on the left side, Mauer's going to take a three. She's going to make a three, and that gives the West a one-point lead, 63-62. And now they're pressing. You don't think Perry Messer wants to get the W here? Oh, yes, he does. In, in an exhibition game, he wants that win. Look at See how it's changed, Bobby? Yeah. They've all dug in a three-pointer by Demers on the right side is good. And by the way, Demers only had her two free throws in that first half. Shannon Demers of where? 65-63 East. Three minutes to play in the basketball game. What a great night here at Smith so far. More to come. The boys game on the way. Now a steal by Chloe Ellis. Ooh, she got bumped. No foul call. Abby Edge. Ooh, threw it behind Haugus. Going the other way from where it'll be West Ball. They trail by two. Abby Edge says, we haven't played together much, have we? <laughs> <laughs> This is the crew that's going to finish it out, I think, Bob. Yeah. I think this is the crew. Each coach has figured out the five that he wants out there. On the left side, three ball. Tanner in and out, no good. So the East will keep the two-point lead, and they have the ball. Taking it across. Into the paint. Haugus got blocked. Great Nicely. block by Tanner. Nice wow. block by Tanner. She is so good, Jeff. It'll stay with the East. Abby Edge will inbound on the baseline right. Yeah, they actually did sub. They did get Ashley Walker back in there. And now a steal. Here comes Tanner. She's going to take it coast to coast. She lays it up and in. Emma Tanner. She is just on fire here tonight. We are tied at 65. 210 to play in regulation. Who knows? It might take more than 40 minutes. Mary Whalen swoops through. Rejected by Liz Howland. Tanner from Northampton High coming back. Between the circles, fires a pass right side. Ashley Walker, the runner, in and out, no good, just popped out on her. Battle for the rebound, Chloe Ellis. 
Ellis gets it away. Long lead pass right side. Abby Edge is gonna take the three. Yes! Nothing but nylon for her. You know, her sister's really been the dominant one, but that was a huge shot by Abby. 68-65 East. Three-point lead, a minute 37 to play in the basketball game. They work it on the right side. A three-pointer, Tanner hits again. Wow! What a night. We're tied at 68. What a, I tell you what, the girls have set the bar pretty high. I don't, I don't know if the boys' game is going to be as entertaining as this one, Bob. This has been great. The ladies have done great. Oh, Hallius comes through, and Jordan went down hard, and a foul on Maurer. I think they got Maurer. Ooh, they got Tanner. I'm trying to figure out how Tanner was called on that one. <laughs> Helgas to the line, she'll be shooting one and one. Ellis checks out, uh, Mary Whalen checks out as well. So they have a couple of uh, new girls in there. I just want to tell you, Jeff, the girls have averaged over 80% from the free throw line, both teams here tonight. That's a great stat. Yeah, they have played really well. These girls have put on a great show. Burks just checked in for the East from Belchertown. The shot no good there. 68 all is our tie. Chance now for the West to once again reclaim the lead. Lizzie Howland gets it away on the right side. Tanner, oh, they jump out on her. Look at that. They're going to D up on that girl. Mauer has it now. Shot clock down to 18. Tanner, top of the key. They tried to feed the paint. Picked away. Brooks going after it. Hill ball. Arrow will favor the West. 57.4 seconds left. 68 all time. All right. Here we go. This is what we're talking about. This is March Madness at its best right here. Yeah, we Love it. We've seen some all-star games that uh, one team just had the better of it, but... This has been extremely, extremely entertaining. Ashley Walker goes right baseline. Passes in the paint, put up. No good. Rebound put up. No. Oh, nice. Howland got fouled. Job. Great job by Lizzie Howland sticking with it. Now, I did not see Hick here. Uh, you, you but know, again, there's we, so many people here right so many now. People here, yeah. yeah. A little tough. I don't, want to, I don't want to be the one to tell him or to tell Lizzie Howland or Reagan Hickey or any of those girls that had Greenfield somehow been able to get past Hampshire, they quite likely would be playing for a state title tomorrow. I, I, think, I think they, they would have beat Sutton. I think they yeah. would have won Western Mass I and they would have beat Sutton. I absolutely agree with that 100%. Yeah. I think they would have handled Sutton easily, actually. All Howland right. hits Here the second. Go. One point lead for the West, 69-68, 42.4 seconds left. Now. This ball ends up in the backcourt. Stolen back out of bounds. Oh, it'll stay with the East with a chance to reclaim the lead. They trail by one, 39 seconds left. They inbound it into the front court, Angling towards the right. Algus gets sealed off. It's Edge. That'll be Edge on the right wing. Going right baseline, throws up a runner. Oh, rim down runner, no good. Gutter one rebound, tipped away though. Big battle for it. It's picked up again by Edge. Gets it to the foul line. Mahoney shot up no good. 13 seconds left. They got a foul. Got a foul. They got a foul. Here comes Tanner. They're running out the shot clock here. Running out the game clock. Five seconds left. And a shot is up and no good. Two seconds left. One. It is over. And the West All-Stars have won it by one point. 69-68. We'll take a timeout. Our post-game show coming up next on Bear Country 95.3. This coverage of local high school sports provided by Leader Home Centers, your hometown home center with five locations to serve you in Amherst, South Deerfield, Barry, Greenfield, and Brattleboro, Vermont or online at leaderhome.com. Visit them for all your building material needs. Raymond Financial Services, LLC. Take charge of your financial future. Insurance, investments, and benefits for individuals and employers. Attorney Daniel Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan's a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield office at 773-8706 for all your legal needs. Starting with the home school, the East, the most outstanding player from South Hadley High School, Michaela Edge. Yeah. 
And from the West, with a game high 19 points, Emma Tanner from Northampton. Outstanding game, ladies. Thank you very much. We invite everyone to stay around for the boys game starting in approximately 15 minutes. All right, we're back here at Webb Gymnasium in Hatfield. The girls game in the book, and the West wins it by one, 69-68. Bobby, those girls put on a show. That was a great, that was a great show. Great job, ladies. That's what you call senior fun right there. You know, when you go to on a senior trip or you do something with your senior class, it's always fun, right, Jeff? Absolutely. So today, we got to have a bunch of senior basketball players just do that. Have a bunch of fun here tonight and entertain a great crowd. I'm going to tell you right now, this gym here in Hatfield is full here at Smith Academy. Great crowd. So let's talk about two of the girls. They, they were the uh, players of the game. They're our Helena Chemical players of the game. Great performances tonight by Michaela Edge from South Hadley High School for the East. And the winning team tonight was headed up by Emma Tanner of Northampton. She was phenomenal. Oh, Bobby. she was phenomenal. Both ends. We played great defense. Great job on offense. She ends up with 22 as the high scorer for the West. And Michaela ends up as the high scorer for the East. But I want to say that her best number was that she ended up going literally seven for seven from the free throw line in a game that that was needed. Absolutely, so they win it 69 to 68, a back and forth game. And now we get ready for the guys. And uh, again, all right, here's girls, Showboat. This is what we got to yeah. call Showboat City. Showboat, showboat City. Showboat yeah. City. All right. Until showboat City. until we get late when it's time to win the game, and then and then they buckle down. This sure. is going to be fun. We'll take a timeout. We'll set the scene for the boys coming up next. This is Bear Country 95.3.